Now, before I get for moving forward, we need to talk about this, and it's really important to me. CPR. Canadian Pacific. Guys, I'm gonna be real with you. How many trains have you lost this way? Cause like I, I, I don't I'm not I'm not here to judge or anything, I just deliver facts, but you know, it's it, it's one of those things where I'm like, this is the same railway, this is the third one. Like it's it, it's odd enough that it happened once, but it's really weird that it happened three times. We're, we're at three now. Three locomotives you've lost under the water. And I, I just... I, I mean, in your defense, part of it is the terrain. Especially, you know, old school Canada. You know, things up there are a little wild and wonderful. And, and, and you know, there's a lot of lakes and rivers and stuff, and I get it. You know, it's not... You know, it, 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 there's just more opportunity for you guys to lose trains this way. But also, please, please stop. It's just... You know, not that I don't want more content, it's just every time you do it, someone could die. But fortunately, for this case, no one is dead, so that's nice. Um, but we're talking about CPR 508. Now, CPR 508 was a 440 type steam engine, and if you recognize it... Okay, look, you do. You do, I promise you that. 440s were one of the most prevalent type of steam engines used in the late 1800s, early 1900s. They were an incredibly, incredibly successful type of locomotive in terms of wheel arrangement. They have, are used as like, like the classic, you know, old school train design, you know, and often they are shortened to the American model, even though not only America used them. It wasn't just America and Canada, uh, plenty of countries utilized the 440 wheel arrangement because it turned out to be incredibly efficient and stable. And yeah, these were pretty good engines overall. So yeah, the year was 1900. On June 21st, 508 was operating in its usual route in northwestern New Brunswick when it was going over a bridge spanning the St. John River at Grand Falls. The bridge, for reasons that I have been yet to determine, actually collapsed under the, under the train's weight, and the tr engine, along with most of the train, went into the river. Now, this was a mixed train. There were mostly freight cars, but there was a caboose as well as a passenger car at the end. However, fortunately, they were spared from going directly into the water, although the uh, passenger car did run a uh, vertical. That was, that was good. But like I said early on, nobody died. Though there were some injuries, no one was killed during this accident, fortunately. Now, a cleanup operation did, did happen both to fix the bridge as well as to recover most of the cars. However, there was never any record of 508 being recovered, which was odd. But most people at the time didn't really worry about it, and it wasn't until a century later in the year 2000 when a dude by the name of Eric Ouellette? Goodness, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, first found out about the incident. Now, Eric actually worked with Canadian National Railways, but he was really curious about this incident because, like I said, there was no record of the train ever being taken out of the water. So he contacted CPR, trying to see if they have any records of this, and they insisted that it must have been because the engine continued to serve after the accident. But that's according to them. Eric really wasn't convinced, because CPR seemed to just be kind of, kind of just assume it had been. Just, just that it was there, but, you know, maybe, if it was taken out of the river. But he was still like, no, how did, hmm, he was, he was curious, I'll give him that. So, he started looking deeper, asking around locals and doing his further, more in-depth investigations, using magnometers under the surface to try to see if there was something weird down there that might explain where this engine went off to. Because, like I said, CPR insists that they did take it out, but by insist, they just say, must have. Like, yeah, we, we probably did. Maybe. We, we, don't, we don't remember. Look, let's just go away. So Eric started doing his own investigation. Occasionally he did dives, spanned the debris field, tried to see if he could figure out anything. And he did find something interesting, but it took him a long time to finally figure it out. In 2020, according to him, the mystery has been solved. Now, I don't agree with this part, but we're going to get to that. Using more modern technology, they did another sweep of the area. This time, they found a significant 
mound of metal buried under silt. Now, you may be wondering, well, why would it be buried? Well, that's because it's a river. As we learned from those New Zealand engines, the second you put something in a river, the river is going to bury it. It's going to happen, inevitably. Especially something heavy that can't be moved very easily, even with the pressure of the water. The silt builds up, buries it, coats over it, whatever, so they expected it to be buried in the first place. But this was a really large amount of metal. Really, really perplexing. And the thing is, 8 to 10 tons isn't heavy enough to be the original engine, but Eric argues that, yeah, but the original engine can't be intact. First of all, the cabs of these engines were wood. Okay, the wood's gone. There's no way it was preserved, so we know that. That, and the forward trucks, as well as the cow catchers, weren't actually directly attached to the engine in any real way. It was just the weight of the boiler that kept them in place. So those probably aren't even with the engine itself. Based on these findings, he suspects and, you know, completely believes that he's found where the final resting place of 508 happens to be. Despite CPR insisting that they actually recovered it and were using it without any evidence to the contrary when it comes to pictures of it or things like that, Eric's pretty convinced that it's actually there, under the water, buried under silt. Where it will probably stay, because this is the part of the conversation where we get into, well, should we bring it up? Well, it's a little itsy bitsy problem that's buried under a mount of silt, and I can promise you it's probably not in very good condition. After all, the cab is gone, and, you know, the forward trucks and the cow, like, there's a bunch of pieces not on it. The other issue is that there are examples of 440s all over the place. It was a very, very popular setup for steam engines. So, it's not like that this particular type of engine is necessarily that unique. So, the act of getting it out of there, it being in rough shape, probably, and it not really being worth preserving. I mean, it's one of those things, but, but honestly, part of me wonders if CPR might actually be telling the truth. Eric's own research, and I commend him for it, don't get me wrong, but my argument here is that, okay, you found a bunch of metal, though. Well, that could be friggin' anything! You know, I'm not saying it isn't 508, but what I am saying is CPR told you it's not down there. You think they're wrong, and you think they're just, you know, blowing it off, which they may be. And, you know, you, you found this large thing. But what if that's a piece of the old bridge, or a piece of the cars, or, or a bunch of other stuff it could possibly be? Until someone gets down there and actually clears the silt out of the way so we can see what it is, it's not a confirmed thing that the engine is even still in the river. Because, like I said, CPR says they took it out, and they said it was scrapped in 1910, which makes sense. But, also, what if they're not- they're wrong? What if the engine is still there? It's, it's one of those- this is the weirdest mystery I've covered because we have two arguments where, you know, this engine isn't there. Yes, it is. Well, did you find it? Well, I found a bunch of metal. Okay, but that doesn't prove anything. I mean, it could be freaking natural iron deposits or something. I mean, it could- it, it could literally be anything. And that's kind of where I'm stuck at this with, with this particular mystery. I don't want to disappoint anybody by saying that the engine's not there, but until we get pictures of it actually being down there, and, you know, that solid evidence, Pixar, it didn't happen, man. You know, magnometers are great, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta deliver on the goods here is all I'm trying to say. So if you really want to prove it's down there, I say clear that silt out and see what that big metal thing actually is. If it is the engine, awesome. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see that it's still there and, you know, see what condition it's in. But beyond that, we're kind of stuck. So, can you call 508 a mystery or not? I don't know. I guess it's up to you guys to decide. Down in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or whatever you feel like doing. And until next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.